And here we're going to have one of the true highlights, Steffi, or? Huh? Steffi. We have, you all know, John, Brock John Brockman is talking to Richard Dawkins and Craig Renter. This is a very special thing. And we are, we are very grateful, John, that you brought this panel together. What made you to bring it together? He's busy, sorry. <laughs> we know John for a long time. He always inspired us a lot. He, he was the one who introduced me to the term digerati. And now he's introducing you all to the most essential issue of the new century. Thank you, Steffi. Hello? Hello? Can you make it louder, please? Uh, thank you for coming. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Then, then stop talking. Yeah. Yeah, 1998, 10 years ago, there was a, an event in Munich called the Digital Planet, featuring Richard Dawkins, Jared Diamond, Steven Pinker, and Daniel C. Dennett, uh, four of my good friends, all of whom happen to be clients of my literary agency. So I had nothing to do with it. It was a German named Christoph Reisner. Um, the meeting was held in a barn-like auditorium on a rainy, freezing night uh, the place was absolutely sold out. 300 people were standing in the rain. And uh, the event went from 8 to 12, and nobody left. It was uh, amazing. The Four Seasons Hotel was filled with journalists from all over Europe. Uh, and uh, Douglas Adams introduced the panel, and uh, everybody had a marvelous time. I thought it was a real breakthrough. It was happening in Germany, which wasn't known for uh, interest in trade science books or uh, what I call the third culture writer. And uh, we went home. Uh, three years later, four years later, very little had happened. Uh, it was still hard to sell books in Germany. And I woke up one night, three in the morning, and I slapped myself in the head, and I realized everybody came to hear Douglas Adams and uh, not the scientists. But here we are, 10 years later, and it's not every day you have Richard Dawkins and Craig Venter on a stage together. Uh, Richard Dawkins is responsible for possibly the most important science book of the last century, The Selfish Gene, published in 1976, which set forth an agenda of the gene-centric or genes-eyed view of life uh, which uh, has become the basic science agenda for biologists for the last quarter century. And without that worldview, you wouldn't have Craig Venter changing the world the way he is today. Uh, Craig Venter is the man who led the private group that decoded the human genome in 2001. He's uh, working on the forefront of Artificial, uh, artificial life, synthetic biology. He's traveling around the world on a sailboat, uh, finding millions of new genes in the oceans in, in very dramatic fashion. And uh, uh, most recently in June, I believe, he, um, his lab was responsible for transplanting uh, uh, the information from one genome into another. Is that how you, you know, in other words, uh, your dog becomes your cat. So, 
Uh, what we'll do is a conversation between Craig and Richard, and uh, if any of you have questions, uh, please raise your hands. Can you hear me with this? I didn't know it was going to be this kind of microphone. I'm not used to it. Um, there's a lot of noise off, so uh, if, you, if, if I'm not doing it the, the right way to make it easy for you to hear, um, signal. I thought I'd begin by reading a quotation from a famous philosopher of, and historian of science from the 1930s, Charles Singer, to give an idea of exactly how much things have changed and uh, Craig Venter is uh, a leader, perhaps the leader, in making that change today. So this is a quote from 1930, Charles Singer. Despite interpretations to the contrary, the theory of the gene is not a mechanist theory. The gene is no more comprehensible as a chemical or physical entity than is the cell, or for that matter, the organism itself. If I ask for a living chromosome, that is, for the only effective kind of chromosome, no one can give it to me except in its living surroundings any more than he can give me a living arm or leg. The doctrine of the relativity of functions is as true for the gene as it is for any of the organs of the body. They exist and function only in relation to other organs. Thus, the last of the biological theories leaves us where the first started, in the presence of a power called life or psyche, which is not only of its own kind, but unique in each and all of its exhibitions. You couldn't ask for a more comprehensive destruction of a uh, conventional view than that. That is not just wrong, it is catastrophically, utterly, stupefyingly wrong. It's wrong in an interesting way, and Craig is the best person to tell us what's wrong with all that. I, I feel like this is a quiz, Richard. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, as you heard from John, uh, Richard's book on the selfish gene really influenced most thinking in modern biology. Uh, I actually didn't like his book initially. I've never told him that. Uh, I figure it was safer as a distance now, but uh, I've come to appreciate it immensely. Uh, I was looking at the world from a genome-centric view, the collection of genes that put together to, to lead to any one species. But as we traveled around the world uh, trying to look at the diversity of biology, we came up with larger and larger collections of genes. We now have a database of roughly 10 million of these. Uh, that number will probably double again this year uh, to 20 million. Uh, to put it in context, we as humans only have around 22,000 genes, uh, so we're, we represent a sort of a minority of the usage of genes on this planet. Uh, but I've switched and I've really become to view the world in a gene-centric point of view, in part because we're now going into the design phase. So I'm looking at genes as the design components of the future, not just interesting elements of biology. Uh, I now look at genomes as interesting composites of genes, uh, but we have almost an infinite variety that we could put together uh, to create biological machines of the future. Uh, so unlike that quote, chromosomes can exist independently, genes can exist independently, uh, they can move around uh, independently. Uh, the study that John was referring to in the introduction, so last year we isolated the chromosome from one bacterial species and transplanted it into the other, into another one. Uh, the chromosome in the uh, species that we transplanted into was destroyed and all the characteristics of one species went away and got transformed into what was dictated uh, by the new chromosome. It's sort of the ultimate test in proving